University of the Philippines upon the recommendation of the President of the University and the Committee on Honorary Degrees today confers upon you the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. The University of the Philippines, in testimony of this conferment of the highest rank and honor within its gift, hereby presents to you this diploma and these vestments of distinction. On this, the 16th day of January in the year of 2008, signed Emerlinda R. Roman, President, attested Lourdes E. Abadingo, Secretary of the University. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A week ago, we gathered here to listen to the first centennial lecture delivered by Nobel laureate Dr. Jonathan David Gross. It must have struck most of us that the audience of academics in attendance was much smaller than the crowds that gathered on the campus to celebrate the university's centennial celebrations accompanied by um, waving banners, burning torches, festive floats, skydivers, fireworks, all moving to the infectious rhythm of UP Angaling Mo. Be that as it may, the centerpiece of these celebrations is actually our 2008 UP Centennial Lecture Series for after the hoopla marking the 100th birthday has died down, what will remain is our plans for the next 200 years, the roadmap for the university's second century. You will pardon me for being repetitive. I shall again explain what the lecture series is all about. I have done this during the first lecture, but. I am not sure that you were all around when I did that, so allow me to spend a few minutes to give you an overview of the lecture series. Two components of the series have to do with UP itself, the 12 Centennial Fellows who were selected on the basis of their outstanding record as scholars will direct our look backward to the path we have traveled thus far, and forward to the road not yet taken. They will, help us, they, they will help us assess our own record and give suggestions for directions for the future. And distinguished individuals from outside the UP community will offer us their ideas about what the university signifies for the rest of the country and how we can best continue to serve it. The other th two components range farther afield. In keeping with our role as the national university and therefore an important source of ideas that will not just advance knowledge but will guide policy, experts both from UP and out other institutions will explore pressing issues confronting the nation and the world today, 
issues like poverty alleviation, health, the state of education, the status of women, global warming, indigenous peoples, etc. Finally, distinguished persons whose life work has merited the respect and recognition of the world, not just as experts, but as visionaries, will share their insights on issues in their respective fields. Today, we have the honor of welcoming the second of these distinguished individuals, who happens also to be a hometown boy, Dr. Baldomero Oliveira. Dr. Oliveira is one of our very own, a UP graduate, and a summa cum laude at that. I can go on and on and give you a litany of Dr. Oliveira's professional life, but I shall defer to our next speaker who will introduce our guest of honor. I believe she will focus on our guest's outstanding record as an academic and a scholar. But on a personal note, let me add a piece of information about our guest of honor. Two days ago, I was in Malacanang to witness the conferment upon him by the President, uh, President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo of the Philippine Legion of Honor, the rank of Grand Officer. The ceremony was simple but elegant and very formal. It was an event befitting a very distinguished individual. After all the formalities, what struck me was the image of Dr. Bal Dr. Oliveira, who, when it was time to take pictures, lifted his granddaughter, who was fast asleep, in his arms. And so there you have the proud grandfather and the sleeping granddaughter together in a picture at the palace with no less than the President of the Republic of the Philippines. So to his many awards and titles, Dr. Oliveira, we add one more as grandfather. I don't want to take up more time than I should. Let me close with a reminder to our colleagues who are present here today. Dear friends, if the opening years of the 21st century are a prelude of things to come, the Philippines, and indeed the world, is in for a rocky time. As UP celebrates its centennial, the rest of the country is looking to us, as it has always done, to help steer the country through these perilous waters. Leadership of the country cannot be left to the politicians alone, well-intentioned though many of them might be. The mind of the scholar, sober, precise, tolerant, dauntless, both rational and imaginative, both meticulous and adventurous, is of immense importance. And as we struggle to fulfill our role, we are grateful for the guidance of people like our guest of honor here today. So Dr. Oliveira, welcome back to your alma mater. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I have the honor to introduce to you our distinguished speaker. He is a Filipino scientist who was raised and educated in his youth in the Philippines in this university. He is now a distinguished professor of biology at the University of Utah. And last year, he was named 2007 Scientist of the Year by Harvard Foundation, a special recognition for his outstanding achievements and contributions to American science, and for his notable contributions to molecular biology and groundbreaking work with conotoxins. Professor Baldomero Toto Oliveira has distinguished himself as one of the world's leaders in molluscan biodiversity, 
toxinology and drug discovery, and in neuropharmacology. His work in the last 30 years, supported by the U.S. National Institute of General Medicine Sciences on peptides produced by venomous conus snails, has led to the elucidation of key molecular mechanisms that underlie nervous system function. Because many of us already know of Dr. Oliveira's numerous achievements and awards, today I would rather reflect briefly on how these were realized with certain personal qualities and circumstances of Toto that perhaps some of us do not yet know. Toto recounts certain critical incidents in his youth that contributed to his success as a scientist. As an only child living mostly in isolation with his parents, with no neighbors, he had an enormous amount of free time. This led to his fascination with all the creatures that were wandering around in his surroundings. It also gave him time to read a lot of books. Among nature's wonders, he was most intrigued with the beauty, the diverse shapes and intricate colors and patterns of seashells. Early in life, he became an avid shell collector, honing his keen, meticulous power of observation. And thus, his understanding of snail morphology, taxonomy, biology, and behavior became almost intuitive later in his scientific life. In the second grade, his teacher taught him to perform a simple solubility experiment and so he went around testing everything he could get hold of to see if it were soluble in water or not. For him, it was discovery and the sense of power that it was something he could determine himself, something that he didn't know before, he says, is one reason he is a scientist today. The third and most important scientific influence in his life was a dedicated high school teacher in chemistry and zoology the late Dolly Hernandez of UP, who recognized his unique talents and inspired and guided him towards a career in science. It is interesting to note that while Toto comes from a family known for outstanding intellects and talents, none in his family other than Toto had chosen a life in science. Toto is a standout in his family. On the other hand, Toto is a person of multiple scholarly interests. It is the same kind of thoroughness and fascination in science that he shares with family in other fields of the humanities. The arts, including the culinary arts, music, history, geography, paleontology, archaeology, the records of antiquity as they reflect the human human culture and psychology. And among family, it is his wife, Lulu, who is his most kindred spirit, his most enthusiastic and knowledgeable partner in all these happy pursuits. Not much is said now about the earliest scientific work of Toto Oliveira. Understandably, when this is compared with his voluminous work on the conus snails. But his early work gives us good insight into how Toto views the natural world and how he is continuing his lifelong scientific journey. <laughs> 